Marilyn again and Transcultural Caring Dynamics in Nursing and Healthcare. And uh, we looked at the model and all the different dimensions of the model. And now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about an assessment tool. And this is a, a cultural assessment tool that uh, uh, we're within the context of that assessment tool. Often there can be different conflicts. So what I'd like to do is, uh, it looks like a busy, busy model, and it is a busy model, but um, these are some elements that help us become more aware of uh, what often becomes conflict within our relationships with people of different cultures, or maybe, maybe even understanding our own selves and our own culture and our own family, and also to um, really begin to understand the context again, or the historical context that we all live in at this time. So this model um, has all these different elements to it, and so I'll, ta I'll talk about the first one, which we talked about a little bit before when I shared about my theoretical model, but we're looking again when people whom we're relating with might come from different uh, culture histories, which is different ideologies or belief systems and different religions. So, uh, and that could mean even people whom we work with. You know, uh, we are now working with uh, many professional nurses who are coming from different cultures who might have some different backgrounds that uh, we don't have. And so uh, trying to understand these um, belief systems or what it was called ideologies or religions. Uh, for example, if we were uh, working with a, a nurse who was of the Muslim culture, Islamic faith, and so uh, there's a um, a mandate within the religion to pray five times a day. So then we would have to negotiate with each other to begin to understand how we can facilitate and help one of the nurses um, uh, or our nurses, um, if they have this belief, how they can have time out for prayer. And, uh, and then again, also if we were caring for a patient and how we would care for them within these different religions. Uh, if we had a Catholic patient and we had a patient who wanted to say his or her rosary and we would have to find a way that they had quiet time to be able to, uh, to do that. So if we don't, we could maybe have conflict. So this is an assessment tool that helps us understand ideologies and religions that are diverse or different. And so uh, one of the major things too, and especially those of us that live in South Florida, we have people who, have, uh, who may not be English speaking and we may not be fluent in Spanish or Creole. And so we have to be aware of what uh, potentially uh, we have to do to help people to um, be able to communicate what their health needs are. And uh, there is also generally in our modern hospitals, we have uh, opportunity for interpreters. Now, sometimes we can use a family member as an interpreter, but uh, from a professional point of view, uh, you know, this might cause some difficulties if, uh, if the family member is interpreting within the framework of their own uh, self and might not be expressing the needs of the patient as well. So if, if we don't understand a patient uh, and their language, it is a, a important for us to seek uh, a way that we can communicate more adequately. And again, uh, we also have the technical language that we're working with. And, uh, and in our modern hospitals, we have to be aware of what those technologies either uh, provi <laughs> uh, provide maybe different conflicts, like today in a 12-hour duty, sometimes a nurse is on the uh, computer for four hours of that 12-hour shift, or sometimes even greater. So we have to be aware of uh, how do we integrate this technology into our nursing care, but at the same time not let it take over everything that we do. And so that becomes a very great part of our communication uh, in today's world in our modern hospitals. 
and then if we're in, in nation states that uh, don't have technologies, then how do we adequately communicate uh, so that the best uh, provision of care can be provided? Like right now with the hurricane that, uh, um, Hurricane Matthew that hit Haiti, it is an enormous um, health care issue there. We even have uh, old fashioned diseases such as cholera you know, that are showing up. So we have to be aware of how uh, these kinds of things can uh, uh, impact health and health care. And uh, again, as I talked about uh, before, was social media and how social media is impacting us. And, uh, and maybe uh, we're trying to find ways to uh, have more knowledge about a particular disease process or something and we might go on social media or the internet you know to try to find out uh, uh, what what protocol might be established so that we might be able to care better and sometimes physicians get critiqued because oftentimes they might go on uh, a computer to see what protocol has already been established for a particular um, illness or disease and as a consequence they might not be listening to the patient. So uh, we have to be open to what these uh, communication systems are. Uh, the other one I spoke a lot about in the model which was looking at diverse cultural rituals and how they play a role in meaning and meaning of health. So uh, if a patient uh, is uh, has a different ritual uh, that we don't understand, it's important for us again to communicate about those uh, cultural rituals and even our own, you know, that we might uh, 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 maybe have but don't often recognize. But it can cause some types of conflict sometimes. And uh, again, uh, different in the model of looking at different symbols and meaning of reality and health care and caring. So each of us, again, comes from uh, a particular value system. And uh, so that value system impacts our meaning system or what something means to us in terms of health and health care as well as uh, caring. So as long as we can recognize that there is a potential for conflict there, but we're aware of it, and one of the most important things I think often is uh, reflecting on ourselves and then we can begin to see how we might be different from other people whom we work with and, uh, or, and if we work with people of different cultures and how we are more open and understanding about uh, the nature of our relationships. And then uh, we have again differences in gender so we have uh, uh, differences that um, and and also in race and you know we've had a hard time sometimes and even in the discipline of anthropology talking about race but uh, we have racial uh, uh, differences and and often sometimes they can cause conflict but we as nurses need to be open to these uh, differences and also differences in gender and also including the uh, LGBT community and what that means also within the context of, uh, of doing good, excellent transcultural caring. We may have intergenerational conflict and this is not an easy notion because in, in our institutions, uh, we may have nurses who are as old as I am working who are of a different generation and then we have young nurses so uh, there may be this kind of, in, uh, you know, this is what they say today in, in our hospitals that, you know, the young nurses are very cognizant about social media and internet uh, and computer knowledge. And uh, uh, we older folks, uh, we don't have uh, that particular, uh, we might have the knowledge, but not the particular expertise. So that can uh, open us up to some kind of intergenerational conflict. And we might see that with our patients and family members. There's differences in, uh, in the generations when they're trying to come to some understanding about a person's health or, or uh, future, uh, if they have to go to a nursing home 
or assisted living facility or a rehab center or something of that sort. And, uh, and then again, the uh, social environment or the social class. I mean, it, it's hard to say that in our culture we have class structure, but we definitely do. Uh, and sometimes we don't treat people the same way if they might be from the culture of poverty uh, or the uh, opposite, which would be the culture of wealth. So we have to be aware of, of what the potential conflicts might be within uh, that idea of social class and the social environment. Sometimes uh, we have, um, uh, uh, we're fearful. We might be uh, professionally fearful sometimes if we don't particularly understand uh, a particular patient whom we've been assigned or been uh, part of our day's uh, work and we might not be able to, uh, you know, uh, understand through fear. So this just helps us see that that's a possibility. Uh, and then the three areas uh, that are difficult in our, in our uh, understanding of transcultural nursing is prejudice. Um, the idea of prejudice or prejudgment is a natural part of us. We prejudge because we come from a, from a historical background, a professional knowledge background. So the way that we make decisions is by judging uh, something. But we have to be careful uh, uh, when we might uh, prejudge too quickly, especially when we're relating to somebody else who's different from us. So prejudice uh, you know, is a potential for conflict. The other is stereotyping. Oh, and we do this a lot in nursing. You know, we might have uh, somebody who repeats may, maybe coming into the emergency department. And so we might call them a frequent flyer. And so we begin to stereotype uh, people or rather than say a person's name who's in a particular room in a hospital, we might call it a number, 252 or something, rather than actually responding to the fact that there's a human being in that room. So we have to be careful about stereotyping and, and, uh, and certainly within the notion of race or different ethnic groups, people we work with or people we care for, we just have to be, recognize that this is uh, something that we might do and we have to uh, control it somewhat. The other is ethnocentricity. Sometimes we might think that we're uh, our ethnicity is uh, uh, more dominant than the other. So as a result, you know, we have to be um, very open to being potentially ethnocentric, which can cause conflict. The idea of marginality, the idea that we can marginalize somebody or keep them on the edge, or, uh, you know, sometimes people are from two different cultures trying to understand the meaning of what what that is within uh, two different cultures. Uh, our, our, um, our system of, of government legislates uh, certain things. So we, uh, for example, we have the Affordable Care Act now. So we need to be aware of what that means within the notion of health care reform and also the problems that exist as we're moving forward to understand all of the the processes associated with this type of legislation. And then we have different models of care. We have, uh, in our culture, we have what is consi considered maybe more a medical model or a Western model. And when you go to the East, you have an Eastern model of health care. Uh, and then again, I talked at large about economic resources and those problems. And then of course, in nursing, we have a lot of time problems. You know, people say, well, I, I don't have enough time to do transcultural nursing because I don't have enough time in the day. But if we are more aware of it, we, we can be open, you know, to having the time to provide transcultural nursing. And so this uh, model, it, it can help us to see what potential conflict arises uh, when we are working with our patients or working with each other as nurses or trying to understand the, the institutional uh, uh, administrative system, you know, in our healthcare system, so, or institutional care systems. 
So uh, this just gives us an opening to um, what potential conflict might arise.